Today we're going to be building a PC on the channel, and it's unlike any other PC that I've ever built before in my 30 years of building PCs, and actually it's it's that one back there, so shh, don't, don't tell anybody, but it, it's already built. But don't worry, we're going to rewind, we're going to go over the whole process, check out the parts, and see what makes this PC special. It's got no cables. So I figure we might as well start with the components that make this kind of a build actually possible. And while there are several companies now that are trying to bring this kind of thing to market, and we started to see this kind of stuff at CES 2024, uh, honestly, the company that's been doing the most in this space is Asus. They've really been pushing the whole BTF concept, and they have both motherboards, cases, and also graphics cards that support it. So why don't we start off by taking a look at these components. This, first of all, this is their ROG Maximus Z890 Hero BTF. Now, the Hero brand of motherboard or the Hero subset of motherboards uh, has always been on the higher end side for Asus. Uh, and this one certainly is no exception. See if I can get myself in there. There I am. Uh, but uh, yeah, you'll always get a high quality product with an Asus Hero board. Uh, and this one uh, is gonna cost you a pretty penny, unfortunately. I think this MSRP on this one is $700. So not for the faint of wallet, certainly, uh, but this is for the new Intel Core Ultra series of processors. So we're gonna be building with an Intel 285K here. Uh, but we're mainly focusing on the concept of how we're doing this build and not necessarily on the silicon that we're using. So as you can see, this board is quite good looking. It's got all the hallmarks of a uh, 2025 flagship product. It's got a bunch of M.2 drives. It's got memory support for 8,000 plus speed memory. Um, it's got beefy heat sinks over the VRMs. It's got crazy overclocking support. Uh, and it looks really cool too. But we're focusing on this because this is where you normally see your 24 pin cable and your USB front panel headers. And maybe down here you'd see some USB 2.0 headers and some fan headers and maybe some RGB headers. And then up here you'd see your EPS connectors and maybe some more fan or RGB headers. Now, while there is still one up here that is accessible from the front as far as a PW PWM header, everything else is around back. And here is what that looks like. So. You have your EPS up, up top, you have your uh, five volt ARGB header there, you got three PWM headers, and then as we move down the board, you have your 24 pin, your front panel USB headers, your power connector for uh, your GPU, if you were to use one of their BTF GPUs, which they are in very short supply right now. This can actually provide 12 uh, volt two by six power through the motherboard itself. Uh, and then you have your SATA ports, and then down at the bottom, you have another SATA port, uh, some RGB headers, your front panel headers, uh, your USB 2.0 headers, uh, and so on and so forth. So how then, if everything is facing towards the back, does it actually work with a case? Well, this is Asus's A31 case, and it's pretty basic. It's got a fairly simple boxy design with glass on the front, and the side, you've got a back mounted space for up to 320 millimeter fans. You've got room on the top for a radiator, and then you've got some more fan mounting space down the bottom should you want it. The front panel IO, pretty simple. You got two USB type A, one USB type C, uh, power switch, and a headphone jack. But the real magic is with the cutouts on the motherboard tray. So if you look at this motherboard, the EPS cables now will route back directly through that hole right there. You don't need any grommets because there is nothing visible once the motherboard is mounted up in that space. You have all these uh, connectors that will have room to get through up top here. And then your space here is for your 24 pin, your USB front panel headers, and then as we go down, you could see that that just continues all around the motherboard tray with cable pass-through areas that plug directly into the motherboard 
which is protruding behind and you could just use that space behind the motherboard tray to store your cables without anything coming through and potentially messing up the inside aesthetics of the build. So here's just a, a better idea of how this is gonna look when it's inside of your case. No cables will be coming through along this side or along the top. The only cables that you're gonna have is potentially for a graphics card if you do not have one of ASUS's BTF boards. But if you do, there's the connector for that. And you're not gonna have any cables that come through for any reason to show in the main compartment here, which leaves you not only with less cable management to do, but also more space. So you can do more complicated water cooling loops if you want to. You could use larger hardware, uh, more fans. I don't know, you could put little figurines in there if you want. But it does leave the compartment looking extremely clean and neat. And uh, I'm kind of excited because I've never built a system that looks like this before or uses this type of cable management. So yeah, it should be pretty fun. Uh, let's just check out the rest of the parts that we're gonna be working with today and then uh, we'll get right into the build. So I know we briefly touched on the silicon we'd be using and that is Intel's new Core Ultra 9 285K. Uh, it's gotten better over time. Uh, this did not get reviewed well when it first came out, although it definitely has some benefits when it comes to productivity tasks and doing things that require higher memory speeds. Uh, Ultimately, it really loses out in a lot of places to the AMD lineup, especially the X3D chips, if you're just looking for gaming performance. But Intel has honestly kept their word uh, with new BIOS revisions. The performance of this chip has certainly gotten better over time. Uh, and I'm gonna be testing it a lot in productivity applications, which it does kind of shine for. So hopefully this is gonna be a good choice. Uh, for this build. Now, for memory and storage, we're gonna be using stuff from Patriot Viper. We've got the Viper Gaming VP4300 Lite. This is a two terabyte drive, uh, PCIe Gen 4 with uh, read speeds up to 7,400 megabytes per second. And then we got some of the fastest memory out there. This is their Extreme 5 memory. Uh, it's a two by 24 gig kit with speeds of 8,200 mega transfers per second. I'll be honest, I don't love the red top. I wish it was just kind of a more neutral color, but uh, we're going for speed here. And uh, this is definitely one of the best kits that I've ever popped into a system. Uh, so we're gonna see how it performs with the Intel chip that likes faster memory. And then we've got two more components from Asus to finish out our build. This is the RG Strix 1000 watt platinum power supply. And I did do a YouTube short on this guy, but for those of you who may not have seen it, um, power supply is not the sexiest piece of hardware. They kind of usually sit behind a power supply shroud. You don't see them. You don't really think about them unless they fail or something along those lines. But this one's kind of got a trick up its sleeve and it's not just this reflective Strix logo on the side. Uh, you can change this to different colors if you want. The box comes with different color stickers. Uh, but again, not really what we're worried about here. This is what I'm talking about. These two little purple pins. Now this is your 12 volt two by six connector. This is how you connect a GPU uh, or at least a lot of modern NVIDIA GPUs. These two sense pins actually will tell the power supply when the GPU is pulling more power than normal. And when that's the case, it prioritizes power delivery to the GPU as opposed to the CPU. So this is gonna be especially helpful for you guys who are sitting through long gaming sessions at high resolutions where your GPU is just constantly at the limit, constantly pulling all the power that it can, and your CPU honestly is not doing a whole heck of a lot. This power supply will be able to identify those situations and make sure that your GPU is getting the power that it needs. That's pretty cool. And then we got our cooler. This again provided by Asus, the RG Ryujin 3 360 ARGB Extreme. That is a mouthful, but this is a handful. And by that, I mean, it's hard to get your hands around it. It's a 3.5 inch LCD screen on top of the pump. It is absolutely massive. 
I had this out of the box earlier and was taking a look at it. It looks awesome. Uh, and it's gonna be a great centerpiece in the middle of our system that has no other wires. So this is really gonna be the focus of everything. Uh, we're likely gonna put some system stats on there or something similar, but as always, I'm sure you guys know the deal by now. You could put whatever you want on there, a, a GIF, uh, an image, uh, I don't know, some scrolling lewd text if you really want to. Um, but this thing should definitely provide us with enough cooling capacity for our 285K uh, and look really good while doing it. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about today is maybe a touchy subject for a lot of you guys right now, considering how hard these things are to get hold of. Uh, but we do need something to give us a display. So this is Asus's Prime RTX 5070. 5070 is a mid-tier card, 12 gigs of VRAM. Uh, and this is the Prime model. I'll be honest, I'm kind of a fan of this design. It has a lot of uh, shiny plastic on it right now from the the wrap that I haven't taken off, but the shroud underneath is like, like a matte gray. And it's very simple looking. It's very kind of understated. Um, and the back plate also looks pretty good. Just kind of like a gunmetal finish under here. And then you have the flow through cooler at the end. Um, nothing super special about this model, but I kind of like that. It's just very basic. It just kind of does its job, right? It's an RTX 5070, it's gonna be good in DaVinci Resolve, it's gonna be good in Photoshop, uh, and uh, it, it looks pretty good too. So nice, simple, basic, should fit well with the aesthetic that we're going for here. Okay, so those are all of our parts. Let's hop into a quick build montage of this system, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the build process, how my experience was, and what I think overall of this kind of an ecosystem. So how was the build process? What do I think of this system back here? How does it perform? And what do I think of the whole no cables thing? Well, I guess let's do one at a time. So how does it perform? I, I don't know. I just finished the build. Uh, I haven't really even done anything except install Windows on it. So I can't really speak to how it necessarily performs in the tasks that I'm gonna be doing on a daily basis. Um, but with that said, the 285K uh, keeps getting better over time. If you want more information on that, I'll link a video down below to uh, Der Bauer, who just put out uh, a new piece on the performance improvements from Intel on the 285K and what you could expect in game. Uh, and it's actually quite interesting to see how far they've come in a pretty short period of time. Uh, now, as far as the build process itself, uh, for a system that is fairly high powered and not necessarily that simple, it was simple. Uh, the BTF system, having all the cables around back and being able to put the motherboard in without having to worry about routing cables correctly before you put in things like a top radiator or side fans or the graphics card is game changing. You, when you mount the motherboard, you put it in, you don't have to connect anything and then once you've installed your power supply you kind of go back and just plug everything in and around the back side of the build now this keeps the cables out of view clearly but also makes accessibility so much easier uh i wish all builds were like this uh, i'm gonna miss seeing a really nicely prepared nicely color matched 24 pin cable uh in a system like this because uh, I've had experiences with a lot of different uh, companies that make cables for me for my builds, and it's always a special piece to kind of finish it off. Uh, with that said, I will trade that for simplicity, and that's what we get here. Uh, this is going to make building PCs easier, and 
that is going to make it more accessible for more people. So I think that in the long run, this is something that's really going to be beneficial for the PC community. Uh, the whole BTF system, having all the cables accessible in the back, I don't know. I, I'm kind of all about it now. I wish more products were available that fit this ecosystem. Uh, I definitely think it's a bonus and something that other companies should really be pushing for a little bit more. I had never built a system like this before today, and I didn't really know how I was going to feel about it because I, I guess like I've been doing it one way for so long. Um, but yeah, it's it's just better. Like it just there's really hardly any downside except you don't get to see your 24 pin cable if that's really what you want. Now, as far as how the build turned out, uh, I went with purple, as you guys can see. Uh, all the fans are lit up purple, and the fans that are along the bottom of the case, where there were those fans down there, uh, they're actually uh, along with the one in the back. Those are reverse. So the Asus has tough branded fans. You could buy them in standard or reverse. And that means that the blades are swept one way or they're swept the other way. So that you always have the pretty side of the fan facing the interior of your case, but the uh, direction that it's blowing differs based on how the blades are swept. So uh, the intake here is along the bottom and in the rear. And then the ones here along the backside and the ones for the radiator up there, those are exhaust. So we have all the cool air coming in from the bottom and then going out basically the top and the side. Uh, so those tough fans actually worked really well. They were easy to install um, and I don't have any issues with them at all. Now, what about the case? Um, the case was fine. Uh, it fits the ecosystem of BTF, but uh, it's aesthetically fairly basic, I guess. It has the nice wraparound glass, uh, which is becoming more and more standard these days. So you can see the system from the front or from the side, either way. I like the angled piece of this bottom down here, which kind of directs the fans a little bit more upward, kind of blows it towards the graphics card a little bit, and then around the side of the glass up towards the top. Um, it's a little extra feature, and the, the case is, although fairly basic, it's very functional. Um, and I'd recommend it for this kind of a build. Uh, it definitely fits with the aesthetic and obviously with the whole BTF system. And then the motherboard, the hero board, it looks great. Uh, it syncs, obviously, with all the Asus's RGB ecosystem. It has the purple coloring on it, the same as the fans does. The fans do. The fans do. Uh, but again, as far as performance goes, I don't really know just yet. I will be testing that uh, for the next few weeks, probably. Uh, but the cooler, the cooler looks amazing. Like, I love this screen. I, I really like the size of it. Uh, and the display is really nice and crisp. One thing I will say about the motherboard, though, is that it was super easy to enable the Patriot Viper memory to run at its rated speed of 8200, uh, which was pretty great. Like, I just had to hit the XMP profile, and it's running uh, at, at 8200 mega transfers per, per second. So I guess that's a wrap on this build, guys. Uh, I hope you like it. I hope uh, you guys are interested in the BTF form factor because I'll be definitely exploring it in the future as more products come to market that support it. Uh, and if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and get subscribed to the channel. So thank you very much to Asus for providing a lot of these parts. Thank you to you guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.